Hey, 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 how's it going, do it yourselfers? So more than one person has asked me in the past whether you can damage your car's PCM by sending voltage through a test light up the different signal wires for the different sensors that are in your car. All right, so you gotta keep in mind whenever you hear damage happening from electrical issues like car fires or house fires or melted wires or appliances, it is the flow of current that causes the damage not simply voltage. All right, now let's take a minute and simplify things and actually go back to the basics. And let's quickly go over what is actually voltage. Voltage is basically the electrical potential difference between two points. Now, when you measure this, the unit of measurement for this is volts. All right, so let's use this car battery as a quick example. And this is gonna seem basic for you guys, but bear with me, this is gonna make sense uh, later on in the video. So a car battery is supposed to have 12.6 volts because it has six uh, battery cells each having 2.1 volts, all connected in series giving you 12.6 volts. Also electrons from a car battery want to go from the negative side through a circuit to the positive side and basically voltage in layman's terms, I believe one could say that it's how bad or how fast those electrons want to flow through the circuit back to the positive side. So if you want to measure that, you want to grab your multimeter, turn it on, then we're going to put our settings on 20 since we don't expect the voltage we're about to measure to be more than that. Then we grab our test leads, put them on each battery terminal, take our measurement, and there we got 12.4 volts. So yeah, for this battery, 12.4 volts is a measured value in volts for the electric potential between these two points. Again, emphasis on the measured value. All right, now how does a multimeter exactly measure voltage? Or in other words, the multimeter part of your car's PCM measure voltage. Now, I'm not 100% about this, and I should say that I'm no electrical engineer. But hell, I'm not a gynecologist neither, so why stop pretending now? All right, remember how you have to adjust the setting to get the right reading for the different voltage values you're expecting to get? I believe each setting inside this multimeter has a different resistance. And in each setting, your multimeter allows for a very small amount of current to pass through it then measures the current in amps, obviously, and then plugs that into Ohm's law and spits out a voltage value. I know what you're thinking. Hey, that's really great, man, but what the hell is Ohm's law? All right, without boring you to death, all you really need to know about Ohm's law is that it's correct all the time, every time, and it's a simple equation, which means, which states, voltage equals current times resistance, or if you wanna go by the units of measurement, volts equals amps, times ohms. So since your multimeter comes already pre-programmed and it already knows what is the resistance in each setting, then it measures the current. All it really has to do is to times those two values together and then give you your voltage. Also remember when I said current does the damage and not voltage? As you can see on the multimeter side where we have our test leads connected for measuring voltage, resistance, and hertz, this is not a fused connection. All right, this should be a great example. So we're gonna Again, measure the voltage on this battery. As you remember, this, this battery is supposed to have 12.6 volts, but we're gonna put our setting on a lower setting. We're gonna put it on two volts. And when we measure this, our multimeter simply maxes out, but no damage occurs to the multimeter. It simply can't show the correct value. But on the other hand, when you want to measure for current on amps, you have to switch this test lead to one of these two. This first one, if you're measuring up to 200 milliamps, and this is a fused connection. That means if you measure over that, the fuse is gonna blow, saving your multimeter. And this other one is for measuring for more than that, up to 20 amps. And this is unfused and letting you know if you measure more than that, you're gonna destroy your multimeter. So yeah, current is basically the rate of flow of electric charge or electrons. Now you can measure voltage without a closed circuit, However, in order to accurately measure current, you need to have a closed circuit where current is flowing. So when you have your test light and you have it connected to the positive side of the battery, which has, let's say, 12 volts, and you want to test, let's say, your O2 sensor, you want to send uh, voltage through the signal wire of the O2 sensor to the wiring harness to your car's computer. You're actually allowing your car's computer to measure the voltage that's available at the tip of your um, test light, which should be, let's say again, 12 volts. You're not sending any current through that signal wire. All right, so this example should help as well. Let's assume this multimeter is your PCM 
It needs to take a voltage reading coming from the signal wire from your O2 sensor. So you get your test light out, you get it hooked up to the positive side of the battery, and you're gonna touch the signal wire. Let's assume this is our signal wire going to the PCM. And you're gonna touch it, and there you get your 12.4 volts. The test light is not lit, there's no current flow. Your PCM is simply able to measure the voltage that's available at the tip of this test light. Now if the multimeter part of your PCM responsible for measuring the voltage coming from your O2 sensor will only show at a maximum of one volt, it's gonna simply max out. It's not gonna damage the, the multimeter part of your PCM. It's just gonna simply show as one volt if you are connected to the positive side of the battery and you're attaching this to the signal wire on the harness side for your O2 sensor. Now if you're 100% sure of the wire integrity of the signal wire going from your O2 sensor to your car's computer and your computer as well, in other words, you're 100% sure there is no pathway to ground, you don't even need to use a test light. You can use just simply a wire, but that is not recommended and you should always use a test light because you really have nothing to lose and the incandescent light bulb inside your test light is a safety measure. It will limit the amount of current that can flow through that circuit if there is a pathway to ground. Either maybe the, the signal wire is broken somewhere, it is touching a ground, or the pen inside the, your, com, your car's computer is broken and has ground. For whatever reason, if there is ground, by using a test light, you limit the amount of current to, that can flow through this. In other words, you can limit the damage that can be inflicted upon the wiring harness or the car's computer. All right, I know someone's gonna ask, so let's measure the current or the amps that can flow through this test light. So as you can see, we got it connected to the negative side. We're gonna touch the, we got our common test lead on the test light. We have, we're switched over our red test lead to the current side on the, for 20 amps. Then we're gonna put this on the positive side of the battery. And as you can see, we got 0.27 amps. So in other words, 270 milliamps. So what that means is if there was a pathway to ground on that signal wire to your PCM, where it shouldn't be, <laughs> it would be limited to 270 milliamps. And that way you're not gonna inflict a lot of damage on the wiring or the PCM. 270 milliamps is not a lot. Also, you're gonna notice that pathway to ground since this light bulb is gonna illuminate and let you know there's a pathway to ground on that wire where it shouldn't be. Now let's say 270 milliamps is too much for your light kink and let's even just assume you don't even have a test light. But you still wanna send battery voltage off that signal wire to the PCM. Here's what you can do. You can simply use your skin. You can simply use your skin. The skin of your body is a lot more resistant to the flow of current when compared to an incandescent light bulb. In fact, let's measure it. So we'll turn on our multimeter and we're gonna put the setting on 20 million ohms. Cause yeah, that's how much it's gonna be, roughly about. Now person to person, it's gonna be different. I'm assuming depending on your age, how much dead skin you have, but when you grab the test leads, you should have a reading. Oh my God, I'm dead. That's because I'm looking at the multimeter through the camera and got it upside down. All right, now we should have a reading. There, I'm at 2.7, 2.3, 2.4 million ohms of resistance. Again, to clarify, that's the resistance your skin provides. In other, in other words, if currents were to flow from one arm to the other, that's how much resistance there is. Now, as you know, if you were to touch, if you <laughs> were to touch a nine volt battery with your tongue, you're gonna get zapped pretty good. And that's again because you know, the insides of your body actually have very low resistance to the flow of current. In fact, your heart can stop with as little as, I think, 100 milliamps or so. That's if current can find its way past your skin to the insides of your body. So make sure you save your own skin. Say hardly any current can get through your skin, but voltage can still be measured if it's there. So here, we got our multimeter back to the 20 volt setting DC. We got the black test lead on the negative side. We got the positive test lead on this side. We're gonna grab it with one finger, put my other finger on the positive side, and there you can see 12.1 12 vo 12 volts. But yeah, all you have to do is to back probe the signal wire on whatever sensor you're testing, touch the positive battery terminal or grab it with one arm, touch that back probe with the other, you're gonna send voltage to that signal wire. And if there is a pathway to ground due to a damaged wire, let's say, the amps that can flow through your, your skin is gonna be very limited, but 
you're not going to know that, that there is a pathway to ground because there's no uh, light bulb inside your test light that's going to illuminate and letting you know there's a pathway to ground. So can you damage your car's PCM using a test light to send voltage through a, up through a signal wire? No, because you're not really technically sending anything up that wire. There's no current flow. There's no amp flowing through that circuit. You're simply extending the point at which electrical potential difference can be measured as far as your car's PCM is concerned. Now, could a multimeter that's only designed to measure up to one volt, let's say, break when you measure a thousand or, I don't know, 5,000 volts with it? Maybe, I'm not sure, I'm not an electrical engineer, but it would be really, it would be really silly uh, for an electrical engineer that's supposed to spend a lot of time designing these systems, these PCMs, ECUs on a car that runs on a 12.6 volt battery and design it in a way where the voltage measurement for an O2 sensor is up to what I'd say one volt and all of a sudden that measurement, measuring system or that multimeter part of that PCM breaks if battery voltage gets through that wire. I've never heard of this happening and in fact I would be extremely shocked if someone's broke their PCM by allowing it to measure 12 volts instead of whatever, let's say the one volt it would normally expect at that signal wire for that O2 sensor. If this has happened to you, please leave a comment down below. Illuminate the world, but be sure that's, that's how you broke your PCM. It wasn't broken before or it didn't break due to some other silly thing that you did to it. Now, if you enjoyed the humor in this video, you really don't want to miss me talking about James Watts' wife that video in this corner up here. Click on the one below it as well. Also join me on my Patreon page if you want to support me further or just simply subscribe and hit that bell notification so you get to watch my other videos that will be coming out. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.